Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. In the previous episode, we learned about how to add the Gutenberg block pattern. And in this video, we're going to learn about how to submit our WordPress plugin to WordPress org so that it's available publicly open sourced so that anyone can use it. Okay, so in order for you to submit the plugin, uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure your plugin has everything that you need in terms of the directory structure, uh, your code needs to be in compliant with WordPress coding standards. There shouldn't be any security issues, etc. So you can go to wordpress.org slash plugin slash developers slash add and check out the guidelines and it will give you all of the information about what are the different guidelines. For example, it must be compatible with GNU public license. Uh, and then you are responsible for any contents and actions on the plugins in case if there are any updates you need to make sure that it's updated so you have to keep it updated uh, and then code must be human readable etc okay uh, you can also check the frequently asked questions to make sure you're aware about what's needed and then you need to have an account on wordpress org if you have just log in over here and then you'll be able to submit the plugin okay now, before we submit the plugin, uh, there are a few things we need. So if you go back, we need to have a readme.txt. Okay, so I've created this readme.txt and this basically needs to have different information. For example, this will be the name of the plugin. So it will be Aquila features. Okay. And contributors, you need to put your own uh, WordPress org ID. So whatever you use to log into this or register this one, you need to use that ID and put it over here. In case if there are multiple people who have written this plugin, you just put that as comma separated and you put another ID over here. Okay. But uh, for now, it's only me who's doing it. So I'm just putting my ID there. These are the tags. So when people search for your plugin, uh, whatever your plugin does, you can put suitable tags uh, for that so it's easy to be searchable. Then this requires at least WordPress 4.6 and up. Test it up to WordPress 6.0. Uh, stable tags, so my current plugin version is 1.0.0. Requires PHP 5.2.4 minimum or higher. Okay, license is GPL version 2 or later and this is your license url so these are all the elements that needs to be present here uh, then just a little bit of information about what it does so for example this plugin adds two column block patterns so in the previous video we learned about adding one block pattern uh, which was two columns and i've also added another one which i won't be explaining because it's a, it's a similar way so you can just look at the code you'll understand okay so it adds two column block patterns and uh, we will be adding more features uh, in the future, but I think for now it's good enough uh, in order for us to submit it on WordPress org. Okay, this has information about that this adds the block pattern, etc. And the features, so you put some information about the features, etc. Like it has two column layout with heading and text call to action, etc. Installation in use, so you put some information about how to activate, how to install this plugin. If it's not working, what should the user do? And you need some screenshots also. So I have put some screenshots here in the source directory inside of image. So this screenshot is basically showing these two block patterns. So when you go to the plugin page, so for example, let's say I go to WordPress org and then just go to any plugins, for example, Let's say this one. So this has some screenshot. Let's see if they have, yep, like this screenshot. So all of the screenshot that you put, you need to put it like this under screenshot and then name of the file. So whatever screenshot you're gonna use that going to appear over here, okay? Then next thing we're going to need is the banner and stuff. So this is your plugin banner, for example. So I have created a banner of two different sizes. Uh, one is 1544 4 by 500 and second is 772 by 250. These are required dimensions. So this is the one. And then this is the one. Okay, so two banners. Then you have the banner icons. Then you have another icon. So one small and one large. Okay. 
So these are the icons uh, that you're going to need and the banners that you're going to need so that this icon is available here and then you have the banner available here for different screen sizes. All right. So all of this will be uploaded later on to the plugin, uh, the WordPress org SBN directory. Uh, but for now, just for submission purposes, let's ensure that we have all of this in place. Okay. Next, the next thing we're going to do is basically just make sure that uh, we don't have any additional files which are not really necessary for our plugin approval. So I'm just going to check out another branch and remove anything that's not necessary for submitting into WordPress org. So git checkout B. Okay, so git checkout B feature submit WordPress plugin. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is we want to ensure that we create the vendor directory. But what we don't need is any of the packages that we require in the development mode. For example, these packages, coding standard, PHP compatibility, and things like those, right? So what we can do is, uh, but we, of course, we do need the auto load uh, file because without which our um, files, the PHP file, these, these files are not going to load. So we definitely need the auto load.php. So what we do is we run a command and we call it composer We call it composer installed hyphen hyphen no dev. So what this is going to do is not going to install uh, any of the required dev dependencies. Uh, it is as good as think about you have an npm and then if you do npm run prod, npm run build, it's just going to build all of the packages, probably not install any, any of the dev ones. So similarly in composer also, you know, you can ignore the dev ones. Let's hit that and see what happens. You can see that nothing to install, update or remove, but it did generate the auto load files. If you check, here we go, that's our vendor file. Okay, so we've got composer files and all of these things. You have the auto load file as well in that, which is this one. Great, so we'll keep the vendor. And uh, what we don't need is this Babel, ESLint, NVMRC, so just remove that. We don't need Composer JSON, Composer Lock, we can remove that also. Package.json, Package.lock, we don't need this also. Remove the readme.md, we already have the readme.txt, remove webpack config. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to zip this folder and we are going to upload it um, onto WordPress org. But just before we did that, we want to ensure it doesn't have any of the hidden files that we don't really need. So what I'm going to do is I'll copy this and I'll go to my another directory over here and then just paste it and then go to another tab. Just go over here, CD uh, Equila features and just check if we have any hidden files. We do have the dot .git and we don't need that. So I'm just going to do rmrf.git and then I'm going to zip it. So let's zip that. Here it is. Here it is. So I'm going to just zip it, compress, and let's just go ahead and upload this file okay, to WordPress org. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and upload this file to WordPress org. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel. If you aren't already, please start my repository to support my work. And please do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.